Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. This is the weekly recap for Easter weekend. I hope that everybody is just absolutely getting ready to spend some time with family, uh, go to church, and absolutely be thankful for celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Hey, uh, we appreciate all of the fans this week. It has been a wild week. Uh, we covered the story with the Baltimore uh, Bridge incident. And man, that thing where our hearts and, and prayers are going to go out for all of the folks that are impacted. It is going to be a long road to recovery. So with that, uh, enjoy your family, uh, hug everybody. And again, thank you for everyone for all the wonderful feedback that we're getting for Michael and I, and all of the other podcast guests that have been on. Thank you. And have a great Easter. Talk to y'all soon. Big tech latest obsession, finding enough energy, uh, behind door number two, uh, the AI boom is an insatiable appetite for electricity. And this is actually causing one of the biggest problems in the world. Energy hypocrisy. Let's go green. No, we need everything we can get. Oh, let's shoot down nuclear. You're seeing, you're already getting a sense for what's going on in our energy thread today. In the uh, uh, Sarah week, we're sitting here. Uh, Bill Vass, vice president of engineering and Amazon Web Services said the world adds a new data center every three days. Holy cow, Batman. We're talking some serious a heat generation people don't realize how much cooling <coughs> data centers have to have yeah uh we're going to build a hundred gigawatts of new recyclables in a few years you're kind of stuck where it says we're not going to build a hundred gigawatts of new reno yeah. renewables dominion energy uh in uh, richmond is really trying to pick up energy demand they are uh, they've got data centers coming out the wazoo up there <laughs> and they've got some serious problems. So let's take a look. We're putting the accelerator down on developing these clean resources. They are missing the boat. Uh, honestly, nuclear is the only way you're going to be able to solve AI's demand hunger necessity and second only to that is natural gas that's all you're gonna those are your two choices the others oh. cannot be attached to the grid fast enough natural gas first nuclear second wind and solar are incapable physically in order to get this done you gotta love it, this article it really highlights a very interesting conundrum that a lot of these big tech companies are coming into. They want to transition so much to green, but in order to power these massive data centers that can run these huge AI models, well, guess what? You're going to need power at the cheapest possible cost. Even more than just, I mean, you think that data centers right now, the current today's data centers need low cost energy. You're only going to need more as these models get bigger and bigger and, and bigger and bigger. And three weeks ago, uh, Michael, you and I talked on the podcast about Amazon uh, Web Services bought a nuclear reactor from a university. That's how you're going to get data centers. You're going to support your, you know, instead of that old uh, movie, support your local gun sheriff, uh, sheriff, you're going to have to go support your local university's uh, nuclear and buy their cotton picking reactor. It's already sitting there. It's the only yeah, way you're going to be able to do this. Yep. It's, it's, it's a little bit crazy. And I think that people are going to start realizing that very quickly. And you're going to see even a quicker shift to the, natural gas is clean crowd it's going to become very apparent that that's where we need to spend all of our time and spend time reducing methane okay one last thing this uh i'm going to go to the next article here and just real quick Catherine blunt from the wall street journal wrote this story i want to give a shout out to Catherine. i interviewed her almost a year ago or more mm -hmm. and uh it was pretty cool i don't understand uh how 
that just happened. My camera AI knew that I was talking about Catherine Blunt from the for our podcast listeners. It's AI. Zoom, it's AI. It just zoomed in on my nose now that we were talking about it. Ripstone Capital, they go ahead and issue a statement in support of Kimmerger's proposal for the merger between Silverbow and uh, Silverbow and uh, Kimmerich Texas Gas, which is their internal kind of gas company. This is an absolutely um, where's the quote in here, Stu, is is pretty unbelievable. Um, you know, it, it, let me let me find here. They they do a pretty good job of just ripping them repeatedly. This is the quote out of the release: "To repeatedly ignoring shareholders' interest has become somewhat standard practice for Silverbow, as management and the board has pursued their own agenda at the expense." of the shareholders. Again, guys, this is Ripstone Capital. They're one of the larger shareholders in Silverbow, owning about 9.9%. They're in favor. So Kim Ridge, obviously, is, they've got somebody on their train right now. Um, it's Ripsot Capital, excuse me, not Ripstone, but it just sounds cooler if, if, if it was. Everyone's got a stone in their name. Um, what they, <laughs> um, which is it's just absolutely like, hey, we're we're not against it over here. I love that, Stu. They're they're going after them right now. What they claim is that you know this this combination is going to further consolidate. They believe that the the twenty twenty five EBITDA of the combined company is going to be in line to peers. You know what I think is 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 going on here is I think what's going on here is a is a battle of management. Okay, so obviously Kimridge. Ripestone, they're not necessarily a fans of what's going on with Silverbow's management right now. Now, you always wonder, one of the problems that oil and gas companies have had for a while is management has owned very little of the actual equity of the underlying company. So what does that mean? If you have no equity in a company that you're running, who cares about profitability? I'm getting my I'm getting my plan. I'm getting my compensation, you know, for a salary. I'm getting my benefits, but I have nothing tied to the success of the company. It's almost the anti of what Elon did with Tesla, where said I'm literally just going to put my entire compensation plan relative to you know these different financial benchmarks. That's not what's happening in the oil and gas business. You'd be shocked to find how little management teams, specifically of public companies actually own of the underlying which means there's a slight misalign of incentives here if i own zero percent of a company but yet i'm in charge of its financial decision making well i'm going to do everything i can to increase my compensation you know i i i don't have the share and i i don't mean i would just you know bump my salary but i but i'm not financially incentivized in order to do the work of the shareholders which is what the ceo of a company is designed to do it's designed right. to watch out for the shareholders of the company so i think what they're calling out is a is a fact that is not unique to silverbow but it's now that they've got somebody trying to do a merger that clearly silverbow doesn't want now all of a sudden they're getting behind it because guess what happens kimridge comes over they do this merger kimridge is in charge now so yeah, guess right, what right. Yep. Their management team's gone. Now, they're not gone immediately, but they're gone within six months. It's a slow death. It's a profitable death for them. They're gonna Their change of control packages, I'm sure, are great. I'd love to have one of those change of control million-dollar packages in there, but... It doesn't. It, it doesn't mean that they're gonna go. That they're gonna go softly. But I do love the big one of the largest shareholders is siding with Kimbridge. It's gonna get spicy here. It's gonna get spicy. Oil demand outpaces expectation. Testing calculus on peak crude. You know, we keep going peak crude, and uh, everybody's saying, "Are have we reached peak crude in the Permian?" And I think. We're not even close. Um, here's one. You know, we talked about this last week a little bit. Uh, and Amir Nasir, uh, C CEO uh, of Saudi Aramco, we should abandon the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas. This is one we didn't talk about was Russell Hardy, the CEO of uh, VTOL, uh, the global oil trader uh he had said the same kind of thing peak oil and consumption to oil uh 2030s because of downgraded expectations and the adoption of electric vehicles michael this is just an absolute trend and then there's also uh oil governor uh governor group expects 
an increase of 1.4 million barrels per day this year uh to figure to figure which you you like uh says the consensus is uh, expectation about 1.5 million in demand but argues there's considerable upside to risks um what are your thoughts on demand well, I, it's clear that we're probably going to see demand slightly higher than supply. I think that's the current sentiment right now, considering where oil prices are. You've got all of these different, um, you know, oil traders to figure a gun ball. They're all in the same in uh, down the same gun barrel is that, you know, really the fantasy of phasing out oil and gas isn't coming. And we need to make sure that we have enough demand. I see you know, demand somewhere in that 1.3 to 1.5 million range. That's not going to shock anybody. I'm always going to be a little bit higher than what the IEA says. I mean, they still, the IEA in their defense still has demand rising by 1.3 million barrels a day, which was clearly less than yet, uh, last year's 2.2 million. Right. But where's that extra growth going to come from this year? You know, we talked a lot last week about AI and some of that stuff. So I don't know how much crude oil demand you're going to see from the increase of AI. You're going to see probably a lot more nat gas and LNG demand, but there is something to be said about where is that energy going to come from? You know, I think all eyes are going to be on India as they continue to grow, 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 buy cheap Russian oil, um, continue to, to increase. I think, you know, uh, you know, Helen Curry, yeah. she's the chief economist over at Conoco Films, point out, you know, really what you need to do is look at where the emerging market growth is going to come from. It's probably going to be yep. India. The other thing is what are EVs going to do depending on that route. So I think there's a lot of different stuff. I'm going to take the over on the IEA's number, though. Trust yep. me. I loved her comment there, her quote. We're looking for another record high in world demand. I liked her comment. Hey, let's go to our buddies over there at Petro China Books. Uh, President Xi. President Z, record profit as natural gas and fuel demand soar. Um, you know, I think you can recognize the thread. Total revenues for PetroChina slumped by 7% in 2023, and they're up this year. The volumes processed by crude jumped 15.3% year over year. Jet fuel soared by 77%. Oh. Production rose 14.4%. And diesel output, 8.9. Michael, here's where I talked about this a few about a month ago, and that is that the uh, downstream capabilities of uh, China are uh, increasing. Downstream is increasing. Um, and uh, California chowderheads are looking to import from China refined goods yeah it's 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 pretty crazy i mean everybody wants to go get their their oil and gas from somewhere other than the united states you know i mean this just goes to show that you know china is going to continue um to dominate the market from a buying perspective you know they're the, the 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 world's top lmg importer you know, it is interesting to know that that the total revenues did slump by 7%, but that's mainly due to international oil and gas prices, which affects their upstream right. unit. Volumes up. Um, we also saw the same thing happen with, with the Chinese National Offshore Oil Company, which saw its net profit in 2023 slip by 12.5%, again, due to those international prices. So, I mean, that's they're going to keep ticking along over there, but as long as they keep buying, it's, it's not really going to matter. Nope. They're still buying everything they possibly can. Uh, now, what do you think that Russia's, uh, the Ukraine attack in Russia on their refined products uh, is going to do? Because that drove oil up, if I remember right today. Uh, there was some things going on. Hey, uh, hey, this is a disaster, and uh, it's really sad to hear what uh, is going on. Mass casualties feared as box ship takes out bridge in Baltimore. Here's where I didn't know this, Michael. Coal, other coal and exports blocked. Uh, Miss Producer, if you could have her uh, bring in 
you'll see unbaffle me Baltimore. It, there is a uh, map of this uh, bay. Baltimore is now effectively cut off for traffic by sea. Major alt route for I-95 around Baltimore is also cut off. This is a disaster for several different reasons. I did not know that, but this bridge, Michael, right there with a little circle around it, that's the bridge that was built for one reason, hauling uh, chemicals around baltimore to go to the north and guess what that's gasoline that's diesel that's chemicals they don't like pipelines so that's a that is how everything rolls so this is significant for energy going north unbelievable yeah, it's it's an absolute disaster. I mean, we can only be thankful that it happened at 1.30 a.m. and not 6.30 a.m. during, the, you know, a massive commute oh. or else there would have been a lot more a lot more tragedy. Um, we, we were praying for everybody out there in Baltimore. But, yes, I, I, I'm with you. I didn't know this was a, a big shipping, um, specifically coal, coal shipping corridor. So, you know, you immediately saw the price of coal go ahead and or, or coal per ton spike slightly. We also saw some stocks relative to um to uh uh shipping around that Baltimore and, area under armor cost five to seven five to seven years to replace it. Yeah, absolutely. So absolute uh, disaster. Uh, um but and, and we're just praying for everybody effective out there. But yeah, um, you know, that we're still using coal and it's it's gonna get cut off here. So. The UK to miss out on 487 billion generated from offshore oil and gas market without a stable energy policy. This is following along on the story with Colorado is that they are in the $170 million budget deficit, but they're trying to get rid of oil and gas, which is providing a lot of revenue to the state. People don't, and companies and investors don't want to invest into oil and gas, which we, if you haven't, if you've listened to the show, you know that there are decline curves. You drill a well, and then the oil uh, and gas have a declining ratio, uh, ratio coming out of that well. You have to keep drilling. So here's in this, this is from the World uh, Oil website, without stable energy policy and a global competitive tax regime, the UK will miss out on the lion's share of the benefit of a domestic oil offshore energy market that could grow to 450, uh, 487 billion US by 2040. Um, You sit back and take a look. Energy policies need to be balanced. You need all kinds of, all energy. Uh, The uh, OE UK CEO, David Whitehouse said, the UK has 450 billion pounds of domestic energy opportunity that could transform the economy, support jobs, but warning lights are flashing. Uh, I I think that that's pretty important. Warning lights are flashing. Um, We're in a global race for investment and UK energy companies need support of long-term policies, a stable tax regime and responsible rhetoric, rhetoric, uh, rhetoric from all sides. Our journey to net zero and beyond depends on responsibility making of most of our oil and gas production, which is at record lows. We're facing a situation where we must import energy that could have been produced here, where we must rely on a supply chain companies that could have been based here. The UK's world-class oil and gas uh, sector has reduced emissions by 24% since 2018, and we must build our low-carbon future on this achievement. Well said. Um, I'm telling you what, we have to have leaders and people understand that we, oil and gas, the 
is not the bad guy. It is how you use oil and gas. It is nuclear. Let's use nuclear. Let's use wind. Let's use solar. But let's do it responsibly. But let's also get to net zero down the road when we can. Right now, the U.S. is going to have supply chain issues like you wouldn't believe. Um, the... Um, Brooklyn incident is really going to start waking up to the folks on the Northeast. They're going to have higher gas prices. It's going to be Im happening immediately. So this is, we are just in the beginning phases of really understanding how much important that bridge was.